Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in today's video, I'm going to go through the 2019 Maths Methods Exam 1 VCA exam. Now, I've heard a lot of students actually in my tutoring classes that they said that this exam is hard to finish and it has some hard questions. And yeah, so let's just have a walk through it and, you know, let's try it out. So, question one states, if f of x is, find f dash of x. Okay, not too bad. So, f of x can be written as... 3x minus 1 to the negative 1. Now, f dash of x, we bring that negative 1 there, multiply the, uh, so find the derivative of the inside function, which is 3, and minus 1 from the top, so it'll be minus 2 here. So it'll be negative 3 all over 3x minus 1 squared f dash of x. That's your answer for that one. Find the antiderivative of f of x. So... Antiderivative of 1 over 3x minus 1 dx. Now, we know it's 1 over the derivative of the bottom, which is 3. Yep, so 3 log e, the bottom function, this one over here, 3x minus 1 plus c. But it says find an antiderivative. So we're just going to say c equals 0 for this case. For this case, we'll say c equals 0, so meaning that that's your answer. Yeah. Let g of x equal this. Evaluate g dash of 1. So, we know this is u and that's v. So, meaning that g dash of x is what? So, it's x plus 1 um, multiplied by pi cos pi x minus sine x, sine pi of x, 1. Okay, so all over v squared, which in this term is x plus 1 squared. Simplifying, we actually don't even need to simplify this, to be honest. Keep it that, and now we want to find g dash, actually, let's simplify, actually, just because the examiners <laughs> want to probably like a nice g dash of x, so it would just be, pi cos pi x, x plus 1, and if sine, pi x, all over x plus 1 squared. And we want to find g dash of 1. So, pi, so cos pi, what's cos pi? Now, if you look at a cos function over here, at pi, it's negative 1. So, we can just put a negative 1 over here. And if we put, again, 1, so that we here, 2. So, sine pi, we know that sine is a function like this. So, at pi is 0. So, we just leave it as that. And so, 1 plus 1 is 2, and we square root is 4. So, your final answer is, cancel those two out, negative 2, so negative pi over 4. Negative pi over 2, sorry. Negative pi over 2. Is that your answer? Yep, looks right. So let f of x be this. State the rule of this. So find the rule, okay, um, of the inverse. So what we're going to do is let, okay, so let f of x equal y and interchange x and y. So doing that, we're going to get x 1 over... 3x minus 1. Yep. Oh, sorry. 3y minus 1. So it would be 3y minus 1. 1 over x. 3y equals 1x plus 1. And y equals 1 over 3x plus 1 third. Which means that your f inverse of x, your rule, is 1 over 3x plus one third. That's your answer. So state the domain of the inverse. Okay, I mean, yeah, so stating the domain is quite easy. I mean, yes, it's normally, you know, the range of the actual, this function, which is all reals, with the exception of zero. Perfect. I was just going to be like, even this one, you can see that it's all reals with the exception of zero, because it's a hyperbola. So yeah, not too bad. Mm-hmm.
let's move on to the next question. Let G be the real function obtained by applying the transformation T. So we're applying the transformation T to the function of F. So this, find the values of C and D if given that G equals the inverse of F. Okay, so what we're saying is we're going to apply this transformation T to F, so to the function F, to make F inverse. That's what the whole thing means. So, and it's only a translation um, to the right or left or a translation up or bottom. So that's what we need to find those values. So if you look at F of X, let's look at F of X. So F of X is what? 1 over 1 over 3X minus 1. And in inverse of X is... 1 over 3x plus 1 third. So, plus nice 1 third. So, what we can do is they could have, so this again can be actually just a little bit simplified to what? 3x minus 1 third. Yep. Yep, x minus 1 third. So, what we could have done is they could have, they could translate it, say your c value could be they've translated one uh one and a half one so one over three units to the right meaning that your f of x will be one over three x it will change to that so if we say one over three so right one over three so wait x dash is equal to x plus c and x equals x minus c so you see value is one third so means that we've translated it. It should be negative then. Yeah. Negative 1 over 3rd. So if it's negative 1 over 3rd, means that plus 1 third. It means that if we sub that in, we're translating it to the left. Okay, wait, wait. So it's been translated to right. And then we put that in and you translate it to the left. Yes, yes, yeah. So C equals negative 3. Yeah, that's out. That's all right. Just was very confused with that one. Okay, so now we got this. And we, what we want to do is we just want to plus 1 third. So your D value is 1 over 3rd, isn't it? Yeah, so Y. Let's double check. Y is equal to Y plus D, which is Y minus D. Because Y. And we shove that into the function, which will be what? So... One as D plus. Okay, perfect. Works, works. Nice. Yeah, so D equals 1 over 3. 1 over 3 and C is that. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. Is that right? Just double checking. 1 over 3. So D is a translation. Okay, looks all right. Okay. Uh, question 13. Uh, the only possible outcomes when a coin is tossed are head or tail. When an unbiased coin is tossed, the... Wait. When an unbiased uh, coin is tossed, the probability of tossing a head is the same as the probability of tossing. Absolutely. Joe has three coins in her pocket. Two are unbiased and one is biased. Okay. When the biased coin is tossed, the probability of tossing a head is this. Joe randomly selects the coin from her pocket and tosses it for the probability that she tosses a head. Probability tosses a a head. So let's look at it. I just looked at this question right now and just straight away, a probability tree diagram comes to my mind. If it's that hard, it looks so complicated, just do it. Okay. So biased, unbiased. That's what I know that that's the first thing because we know that Joe has three coins and two are unbiased and one, but so it means that he has three in total, but the bias is one on third and this one's two on third. And it also says that Okay, uh, when the bias coin is tossed, so the bias coin is tossed, the probability of tossing a head, so head, we can say this head tail, head tail, the probability of tossing a head is one third. I mean, this would be two thirds. Okay, and the probability of being unbiased is half and half. Makes sense, because an unbiased is a fair coin, an unbiased coin, and they, yeah. So, the probability of head is what? Is the probability of... B H plus probability of um, B dash H, which is one third times one third, 
one nine plus two thirds times half. Cancel that one third. So one on nine plus one third. All right, so that's four on nine. Yep, four on nine. Let me write that nice. Four on nine. Oh, four on nine. Okay, find the probability that she, so find the probability that she selects an unbiased coin. So, unbiased coin, given that she tosses a head. Given she tosses a head, which is, can be written as probability of B intersection H all over probability of H. Mm. Okay. Now, the probability of B intersection H is what? It's two-thirds times half all over. The probability of being head is we, we calculate it as four over nine. Cancel those. So it's one on third divided by four on nine. Um, which, let me just rewrite the whole thing. Is equal to what? So one third divided, so it's nine over four. Three all over four. That's your answer for that one. Okay, done. Solve 1 minus cos x over 2 equals that for x is an element from this. Okay, this is not too bad. So, we know that x is what? Between pi and negative 2 pi. And what's happening is x is halved. So, x over 2 is pi on 2, negative pi. So, that is your new domain you need to look at. So when we're looking at the solution, that's our domain. So if I bring that cos, the other cos there, it should be two cos, x over 2. So it will be half cos, x over 2. So your base angle is what? Half, we know it's pi on 3, is that right? If I draw a nice, so that's pi on 3, that's the root 3, 2, 1, cos is half. Okay, perfect. So it's pi on 3. So it means that x over 2 is, if we draw a nice, so where in um, is, in the Cartesian, where is um, cos positive? So it's C here and A here. Okay, so, and it's only, we only go on there, so it's only these two solutions over here. So it will be negative pi on 3, pi on 3. Therefore your x values are, Negative 2 pi on 3. X equals 2 pi on 3. That's the answers. Solve to that. Okay, perfect. The function negative 2 to pi of f of x is shown. So let g be g of x 1 minus f of x. Sketch the graph of g on the x below. Label all points of intersection of the graph of f and g. So f and g. And the endpoints of G with their coordinates. Okay, so what can we see that negative f of x? So it's being like reflected along the or x axis. So, so what's happened is everything here. So this will be over here. This point. This point will be always here. This will point. So imagine that's here. So it would be over here. This point here, but right over here. This over here it looks like over here. This one stays the same. This one over here. Over here. Over here. And this one looks like it's over here. And this one looks like over here. Nice. So I'm just going to nicely sketch. It's like that. Something like that. Perfect. And... What's happened is that it's translated up one unit. So what we can just do is really take this, translate it up one unit. So up one unit. Perfect. Done. So sketch the graph of D, label all points of intersection. So the intersection is this over here. So this point actually just, let me just very much. Okay. So your point of intersection is, so it's these values, what we just got over here. Yeah, so it will be 2 pi on 3, 
2 pi on 3 on y. So if I put 2 pi on 3 into the function, let's say f of x, it'll be just cos pi on 3, which is a half. So yeah, half. So that's your first value. And this one is negative 2 pi on 3 and should be also a half. Um, so sketch the graph on the axis below there, but all endpoints of intersection, we've done that. And the endpoints with the coordinates. So the endpoint, so for both of these, is what? So, wait. Okay, so we know that this is negative 2 pi, negative 1. So this one's also negative 2 pi, 2. Mm-hmm. This one's pi, 0. This one is pi, 1. Yeah, that's it. So we've pointed the intersection of the endpoints. That's it. Okay, that's it. Question 5. f of x is this. Evaluate f negative 1. Easy. f negative 1, sub in negative 1. So 2, negative 1 minus 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. Negative 2, so that'll be 4 plus 1. So half plus 1, which is 3 on 2. Nice. Sketch a graph on the f on the axis label all asymptotes of the equation. So we know that we have an asymptote y equals 1. So y equals 1, so it's just over here. So, so we just write y equals 1. And at x equals 1, 2. So x equals 1. We also know there's... Look, they give us an easy hint. So at f negative 1 is 3 on 2, which is... The point, 3 over 2, so which is 1.5, which is over here. What's our y-axis? And remember, it is a truncus. So the way this truncus, because it has a positive dot, it's just going to look like this. So what I know um, is if I start in 0, so 0, 2, 0, 1, plus 1, 3. So we over this point over here. So now sketching this nicely, it will look like... Like that. I'm just kind of nicely reflecting this on this over here. I just want to nicely reflect it. So, so it's over here and like that. Um, yeah, is that right? Mm. So there's the so two. One. Okay, perfect. It looks nice. Yeah, there's a point also here. Just put these arrows. So sketch the graph label. Oh, that's over there. Just asymptotes. You don't have to label like the y-intercept and stuff. That's that. Find the area bounded by the graph of f, the x-axis, and the line x equals negative 1, and the line x equals 0. So I'm just going to take a picture of this. And just nicely use it as a reference. Like that. And I'm going to copy that. Uh, copy. Place it right over here. Okay, so look, place it right over here. So at x negative 1 and x equals 0. So what we want to find is... Okay, so what we want to find is this over here. This whole area. This area right over here. So to find that area, it is very simple. So it's... Your area is from negative 1 to 0 of f of x. So our f of x is what? 2 x minus 1 plus 1 dx. So doing this, mm, let's split it up. So negative 1, 0 and x minus 1. 2 dx plus is 1, 0, 1 dx. Mm -hmm. The area is, is so um, it's 1 over the derivative, which is just 1, and add um, plus 1, so negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1, so negative 1 over here, x minus, x minus 1, negative 1. Mm-hmm. From negative 1 to 0, 
plus x zero negative one. So we're saying okay. Let's try to sub in for zero. So if we sub in zero, oh wait, wait let's actually simplify it. So we're saying negative one x minus one. Negative one zero. And this one over here is just zero minus negative one. So which is plus one. Just plus one. This over here is plus one, yeah? Yep. So let's just simplify this. So two sub in zero, it's just one minus negative one. So negative one minus one. So we're saying negative two. So half. This here will be half. Mm-hmm. Plus one. Looks right. Okay. Let's simplify this further. So we're saying two minus one plus one, which is two. Your area is equal to two. Yeah, so I'm just gonna take this. I'll just take this over here and just put it over here. Just put it over here. That's your area. I'll just write units squared. There we go. That's that. Question six. Fred owns a company that produces thousands of pegs each day. He randomly selects 41 pegs that are produced on one day and finds that eight are faulty. What is the proportion of faulty pegs in this sample? So this sample has eight over 41. Pegs are packed each day in boxes. Each box holds 12 pegs. Let P be the random variable that represents the proportion of 40 pegs. The actual proportion of 40 pegs produced by the company is this. So your is 1 on 6. Find the probability that this, express your answer in the form is this. Okay. Where A and B are positive rational numbers and N is a positive integer. Okay. Let's try this. So... We know that P, okay, wait. We know that P of is equal to X over N. Yes, and our N value here is 12. So 12 times 1 over 6 is 2. So this whole thing can be written as the probability as X is less than 2. And it's probably binomial. So X is all equal to 1. That's all equal to 1. So, which is just probability of x equals 0, or plus, prob plus probability of x equals 1. So, let's look at this. So, there's 12, so it'll be 12, choose 0. Probably success is 1, 6, 0, 5, 6, 12, plus 12, choose 1, 1 over 6, 1, 5 over 6, 11. Um, simplifying these, these become just that. So it will be 5 over 6, 12, plus 12, 1 over 6, so just 2. This will be 2. 2, 5 over 6, 11. Okay. If I take a 5 over 6 out, so like 5 over 6 out of this, and become it becomes 5 over 6, 11 plus 2, 5 over 6, 11. We can add these two up. What is 5 over 6 plus 2? So it's 5 plus 6 all over 6. 11 over 6, is that right? Uh, um, what, am I, wait, wait, what am I doing? Oh my god. Oh my god, that's happening. I'm just so... Okay, I'm getting myself confused. Okay, so 5 over 6 plus 2. So 5 plus 12 over 6, which is... 5, 6, 7, so 17 over 6. 17 on 6. So, 17 over 6, 5 over 6, 11. Is that right? Let's double check our answer here. So... Where a and b, so a here, this value, is a rational, and b is also a rational, and 11 is a positive integer. 
Looks right, yeah. Looks right. Move on to the next question. Seven. Uh, the graph of the relation y is 1 minus x squared is shown in the axis. Let, be point, let p be the point on the graph in the relation at a in this and b be this. Okay, so they're here. Just over here. It's only yeah, perfect. Find the expression for the length of PB in terms of X only. So PB is what? It's PB is this length over here. Which is what? Just Y minus 0, which is just Y. What is our Y? It's 1 minus X squared. Nice. Find the maximum area of the triangle. Okay, so what's the area of the triangle? So it's half. What's your base? So this base here is X minus negative 1, which is x plus 1, and your length of PB, which is 1 minus x squared. Mm -hmm. So, think of it like this, u and v. So if you can take the half, because that's a constant, u and v, let's try to find the derivative by using the product rule here. So it'll be, it'll be x plus 1 times, so negative 2x over 2, 1 minus x squared plus root 1 minus x squared, that, okay. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. If you're wondering how I do the derivative of 1 minus x squared, it's pretty much, think of it like this. There's actually a shortcut that I do. So imagine, so f of x is a function inside our square root. The derivative of this function, the, the, of, of this overall, is what? It is, we put the derivative of f of x over 2 f of x. So, in this case, it was 1 minus x squared. So, 1 minus x squared, which is what? Find the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x, all over, put a 2 here, and write the whole function again. Cancel these out, and yeah, that's how I... Yeah, that's a very important rule to remember because it helps you out quick in an exam. So now, hmm. well, these cancel out anyway. Okay, we'll put a half here. And so it is x squared plus x over 1 minus x squared. Yeah. So we put plus 1 minus x squared. So the area is half x squared plus x plus 1 minus x squared all over square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay. Mm -hmm. So area is what? Half. Mm. What what have I done here? Wait wait wait. Have I done something wrong? So u is that blah blah blah, and we've done that. So I've took the half out. And I ah okay, I see what I did. Okay, mm. okay, I forgot something. So okay, let's just change these all a of x. Let's change them to a of x. So let's just change them to a of x. A of x. So a of x is what? So I forgot that negative over here. That's why. So it's, again, half negative x squared minus x over 1 minus x squared plus 1x squared, that. So your a of x. And, oh, wait, wait. Yeah. And so that was a of x, and this is your f, a of dash of x. Oh, my God. Just, yeah. So a dash of x is half negative x squared minus x plus 1 minus x squared over 1 minus x squared. Is that right? Okay. So a dash of x is negative 2x squared minus x plus 1 all over 2 1 minus x squared. And we want a dash of x equals 0. Which is, we just want the top, so nx x minus x plus 1 equals 0. So 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. So 2x, x, 1, 1, 
so we'll put here negative, so it will be 2. So, yep, so if we put a negative, that works. So it will be 2x plus 1. x plus 1 equals 0. So x equals half, and x equals negative 1. Mm -hmm. x cannot even equal negative 1, because x over here is supposed to be positive. So we pretty much cancel this one out. And we, or, or just say x must be greater than 0. Reject x negative 1. So x equals half. Subbing back that to the area, formula, so half is what? So it's half, 3 on 2. Okay, 1 minus 1 over 4, which is area half equals 3 over 4, which is 3 on 4. Half, 3 over 4, root 3 on 2. Oh my god, this is so draining. Uh, through 3 over 8. Mm. Is that right? Mm. Wait, 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 wait. So we've done that. Perfect. Blah, blah, blah. And remember, wait, have we, have we done something wrong here? So 3 on 4 makes sense that 3, so 4, 3, root 3 over 2, so multiply those, root 3, yes, it looks right, units squared, I hope it is, because this one is, I don't know if that's right, yeah, look, I, I kind of had to do it quick, but, yeah, so I'm going to, if you guys, if it's wrong, please tell me in the comments down below. I'm not too sure. I'll have a look at the solutions after for all of them. And yeah, maybe I'll write a comment down if, yeah, if it's wrong. Perfect. I just want to, yeah, I'm not too sure about this one. So, did I sub it right? One, so three over four. <coughs> okay, three over two. Yeah, it looks it looks proper. Yeah, looks right. Um, question A: The function this is a polynomial function of degree of four. For part of the graph of the function is fern, the graph touches the x touches the x-axis at the origin. Okay, find the rule of f. So, f of x is what? Well, we know that it has a repeated factor here, so it'll be x squared, and it also touches at here, so it'll be x minus one x plus 1 also at here. Will you just write this as x squared minus 1? Okay. We also know it's negative, so because it's starting from here. So we put a minus here. Because if it was not negative, it would have been this way. So that was also... And we also must put... We don't know the dilation, so we're going to put minus a over here. Minus a over there. So to find the value of a, we already have these two points here. But I'm going to use the positive because it's much easier. So I know that f of 1 over root 2 is equal to 1. So what does that mean? It means that 1 equals negative a, 1, 2, 1, 2, minus 1. Which is um, 1 equals negative a over 2, negative half. So 1 equals a over 4, so a equals 4. Knowing that, we can, yeah, so a equals 4, so a equals 4. Okay, I'm not going to put this over here, just rewrite the thing, a equals 4, so f of x, negative 4, x squared, x squared minus 1. That's your function. Let you be the function of the same rule as f. So, yep. So, same rule. Let h be... So, did, we don't know the domain. h of x is this. Where d is the maximal domain of h, state the domain of this. Okay. We know that... Okay. We know that if you look over this, this is like... 
Um, think of it. So an addition of two, think of it like this function, this whole function is maybe like, um, what, what should I say? K of X. And this one, J of X. At an addition of two um, functions, so an addition of two functions, the domain is the intersection. So, I know that the domain of k of x, which let's say is g of x in this term, the domain of g of x is what? Is g of x must be greater than zero because it's a log, and anything that inside that log must be greater than zero. So, when is here? So, it's greater than zero from negative one to zero union. 0 to 1. Yep. Because it cannot include that one. So knowing that, I can pretty much say that x must be an element from negative 1 to 0, union 0 to 1. That's the domain of, for example, k of x. We want to make sure this must intersect. Oops. This must intersect with the domain of this over here. So, which can be factorized as x plus 1. So, this looks, so we have a 0 here and negative 1. So, it will look like this. And it has it at, when it's greater than 0, from negative 1 is 0, union 0 to infinity, when it's greater than 0. So, the point of so when do these all intersect? They intersect at this over here. So this is your actual D. So your domain, your DOM of H is negative 1 to 0, union 0 to 1. Yeah, that's that for that one. Very all right. Okay. Set the range of H. Range. Range of H. Okay, so we know h of x is what? Log e, negative 4x squared, so negative 4x squared, x squared minus 1, minus log e, mm, x, x squared, x plus 1. Okay, now we know by log laws, this simplifies to what? It simplifies to log e. Um, negative four x squared. This can be just simplified as this. All over x squared, x plus one. Now what can we see here? These cancel out, and these cancel out. Simplifying it to log e. Negative four x minus 1. Yeah, so negative 4 x minus 1. Negative 4 x minus 1. So, this whole graph will look like this. Like, let's just actually a little bit much more expand it. So, negative 4 x plus 4. So, I'm going to draw this over here. Let's have a nice sketch over here. How this graph will look like. What will happen? So, it will look like this. So it's a log, but it's reflected along the y-axis. So it has at x, x equals 1, but it's reflected along the y-axis. So it looks like this. Okay. What else do we know? Well, we know the domain of it from negative 1 to 0. So 0 is going to have an open square here. And from negative 1, so here, let's say negative 1 here. And one is also, yeah, one's a asymptote, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay. So, and that's zero here. So what's the y here? What's the y? So if we sub in zero to the function h, it's this one here, this over here is what? Zero log e4. And this one over here is one, negative one. And if you sub a negative one, so four plus four, so log e, log e eight. That's that. Okay. 
So your actual range of your range of h is from negative infinity. We can see so negative infinity to log e four union log e four. Wait, let me write it nice. This whole thing because. All right, let's just write it nice. Okay, so let me just write it over here. Your range of h is from negative infinity to log e of 4 um, union log e of 4 to log e of 8. What the hell is this, man? <laughs> is this right? This uh, this is so long. For two marks. Range from negative infinity to log e4. And log e4. Okay. I hope that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope that's right. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Log e8. Looks right. I hope it is. Question 9. Okay. Um, wait, this is the last question. Okay, yes. Good. Okay, let's consider the function f of x and g of x. Okay, they're all reals, they're domains. So, state the rule of g of x. Okay, so, g f of x is what? So, g is here, and we're putting f of x into it. So, e 3 plus 2x minus x squared. That's that. Find the values of x for which the derivative is negative. So find the, so let's find the derivative of g of f of x. So I don't know how to actually write, is it like g dash f of x? Um, I'm just gonna write d dx. So d dx of g f of x, yes, must be less than zero because we want it to be negative. So, the derivative of that is what? So, mm, it's going to be 2 minus 2x, e3 plus 2x minus x squared must be less than 0. Okay, what can I do here? Must be less than 0. Um... Can do three plus ah uh, oh my god what has what's happened to me uh of course this over here cannot be less than zero it's always greater than zero so we just decline it so e three plus two x minus x cannot be I don't know like do you write it like that cannot cannot be less than zero less than zero so it's just two minus two x must be less than zero so it's one minus x must be less than zero so negative one let's bring that there is greater than one so one to infinity so your values of x is what yeah so your x must be between like the values of x for that is 1 to infinity. Is that right? The values of x for which the derivative is that. Yeah. Perfect. Looks right. So, is that the rule of fg of x? Um, fg of x is what? So, f and we're shoving in g. So, fg of x is... So, fg of x. So, it's 3, 3 e, 3 plus 2 e x minus so if we put a e so it minus 2e 2x solve that so that's as easy so i see that we know that 3 plus 2e of x minus e of x squared equals zero let u equal e of x so 3 plus 2u minus u squared equals zero so, which is u squared minus 2u minus 3 must equal 0. u, u, 
3, 1, let's put negative here. So negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. Absolutely, it works. Nice. So, simplifies to u minus 3, u plus 1 must equal 0. So, u must equal 3, or u equals negative 1. And let's sub that u equals ex, so ex equals 3 of ex negative 1. We know e of x is greater than 0. Therefore, we reject ex negative 1. So, ex is equal to 3. So, it will be log e 3 equals x. So, log, e, log e equals x. Yep. Yep, we've done that. Perfect. Uh, find the coordinates of the stationary points of the graph f g of x. So, what's, so f g of x is that. So, f g of x. So, to do that, wait. To do that, we're going to find the derivative of it. So, d d x of f g of x. Um, which is what? So, it's 2 e x. And minus two e to so minus two e to x, so two so minus two e to x. Yep, looks good. Uh, and we want it to equal zero. So two e x minus two e two x must equal zero. There's a common factor of two e x. So one minus e x equals zero. Is that right? So minus two. Okay. Yep. And we know that 2ex cannot equal 0. So 1 minus ex equals 0. 1 equals ex. Log e of 1 equals x. Um, so um, x is equal to 0. And we sh put 0 back into the equation. So f g of 0. Um, so if I put into the back of the equation, so it's like 3 plus 2 minus 1. Uh, 4. So 4. So it'll be 4. So it'll be 0 to 4. That's your coordinates. Your last question states, state the number of solutions to g of fx plus fg. Look, I'm, what the hell? Like, I want to be honest... If I was, for one mark for the last question, I'm just going to guess it. Like, I would just say one, two, I don't know, just guess, three maybe. But, like, who can finish this exam in an hour? Like, it's very long. I'm not lying. The questions are quite difficult. Like, this one took some time. Like, it's a very difficult exam. Um, I, I don't know how students had like, finished it that. Yeah. Yeah, so, especially this question, I, I, I would just guess it, but... For this case, I'm just going to try to show you how to answer it. So, how I would try to answer it, but... Okay, I'm going to say... G of x... Of f of x... Equals negative f... G of x. So, I'm going to find the point of intersection between these. And that's going to tell me how many solutions there are. It's much easier than adding them and... Oh, it takes too long. So, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to put this as red. And I'm going to put this as green i'm gonna do a big sketch here a quick big sketch nice big sketch okay something like that y and this is your x value so let's look at g of x and try to sketch it because we know some stuff about it so it's red so g f of x so g f of x is this one we know that fi so final values for which the root is negative so one to infinity so so let's say this is one. Oops. So let's say this is one. So at one at one, if I sub wait, if I sub in one into it, so three plus two minus one. Four. So e four, e four, e to the power four. So e to the power four. So here, right over here, let's say this is one e to the power of four. And we know that it goes down. It goes down. Yeah, so it goes down because it's um it's a negative slope. Yeah, it's negative. So x is from one to infinity. 
Yep, 1 to infinity. But does it go down? Does it go down? Because you need to remember that this is not a function. This is It is a function, but it's e to the power of x. e to the power of x has normally the y, um, y asymptote. So I'm not too sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use limits here. So, okay, say this function here. Let's say if we say infinity. Let's sub in, in x as infinity. Let's say we go positive infinity. Let's say we go to the right, right, right. So we're saying e, we'll say e 3 plus 2 infinity minus infinity squared. Okay. So this is useless. And this one's just a plus 2 infinity. But that minus infinity squared is very strong. Like it dominates. So which is just negative infinity. Think about it like this. So if you're drawing e to the x, it's saying that it goes from it's all negative infinity which approaches zero. So your value is zero. So it doesn't just approach, it, it's, it approaches y equals zero. So this now goes like, it should go like this actually. And so it means that there should be an asymptote over here. Oh, let me just nicely draw this. y equals zero. Let me, all this working out for this question is, yeah, it's not, okay, y equals zero. Um, and what about its other negative infinity? What about if we go to negative infinity? Let's try that. So e3 minus 2 infinity minus negative infinity, which becomes positive infinity. So infinity squared. These still are not dominant. It's still negative infinity squared, which is still it was equal to zero. So again, it just still approaches. Oops, still approaches zero. That's all we need to know. What about your this function um, at negative f g of x? So, what we want to make sure is this. Let me just rub this out. I want to see. Yeah. So, what's f g of x? Is this? So the negative of it is what? Um. It's going to be, wait, what is it? So, e to the x, so it'll be e 2x minus 2, minus 2 e to x, minus 3, minus 3. That's your negative f g of x. All right, so what do we know about this? Well, we know there's an asymptote at y equals 0. I'm just going to draw a nice asymptote. Zero. And what else do we know about it? Well, we've solved for its x intercept. But remember, even, you know how it's negative f g of x? And we're solving it for zero. That negative just goes away. So it's still the same solution. So it just, so it's cross the x-axis at log e3, which is weird which is somewhere around here, let's say, around here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we also know, find the corners of the stationary points at this. So 0 to 4, it also has a stationary point at 0 to 4. But remember, that's your fg of x. We want to make sure if, if it was negative, it would have been... It would be the opposite, actually. This would have been... This would be negative. So 0, negative 4x. So 0 negative, oh, this is supposed to be here, three. so negative 4x, let's say it's here, so it look like this, so it, it, it crosses, we can see that it crosses it, but we, because there's an asymptote, probably this would go like this, let's double check it, so if we say it goes to negative infinity, e negative 2 infinity, minus 2 e negative infinity, minus 3, this is 0, this is also 0, and that's minus 3. Yeah, so it's minus 3. Yeah, so it does approach minus 3. So this one's supposed to be minus 3 here. Y equals negative 3. So we can see that there's only one point of intersection. So state the number, just 1. I'll be honest, that qu last question, and there are other questions. Yeah, they, they seem to be very long for the marks they are giving. So I see why students, some of my tutoring students have been saying this is a couple of like it's a hard exam to finish but yeah it's a stupid exam i'll be honest it's a very stupid exam 
Um, thank you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Um, if you want more of these videos, please support this channel by, you know, sharing it with your friends. And yeah, if you guys want private tutoring, I do private tutor. Uh, my email is right over here. You can pretty much email me anytime and I will make sure to have a discussion with you. We can, you know, talk to each other. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe and yeah, take care of yourself.